harbour on a top secret mission to sink enemy ships. But it actually happened and tomorrow their act of heroism will be remembered with the unveiling of a memorial in Western France. Joe Crowley salutes the bravery and the sacrifice of the cockle shell heroes. In the summer of 1942, this beach near South Sea in Hampshire was sealed off with barbed wire. It was a secret training ground for an elite group of Marines. They were preparing for a truly heroic undercover mission called Operation Frankton. It required peak fitness. They ran, they swam in the open sea, and above all, they became expert at canoeing. They were just canoe, 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 and weather never stopped us. We did it that much that you were used to it. You, you could, we could have turned the canoe around on the sixpence in those days. The men weren't told what lay ahead, an 800-mile seasick journey by submarine from Scotland to Western France. They would launch canoes far off the coast, then paddle 70 miles inland through enemy lines to the port of Bordeaux and blow up as many supply ships as they could. When photographer Quentin Rees came across one of these original canoes, codenamed Cockles, he became so fascinated he wrote a book about them and the extraordinary unit who became the Cockle Shell Heroes. This was their home for five nights. It was an extremely difficult task. They had to paddle so many miles every night and lie up during the day amongst the reeds and the vegetation without really moving at all. The canoes were the ideal way of silently entering enemy waters, enabling the men to plant limpet mines on the ships undetected. What exactly is a limpet mine? I have one here. Six magnets. If you imagine that was the side of the ship, stick on the side of the ship, leave it there, kaboom. The young men charged with this impossible task were all volunteers, and only just out of their teens. How great was the challenge ahead of them? Enormous. These were ordinary Royal Marines. They were the best that were available. Men who were not anxious to die, just anxious to matter. It was thought that none of them would return alive. The men left the UK on board submarine HMS Tuna on November the 30th, 1942. But in the finest Hollywood tradition, their orders were only revealed when they arrived off the French coast a week later. Their commanding officer was 28-year-old Major Blondie Hassler. He offered that anybody who didn't want to go, speak now. I was hoping one of them would, but nobody did. It, it was a suicide mission. An injury had relegated Norman to first reserve. His task was to launch his comrades from the submarine. It was a nice clear night when we launched the canoes and it went to, according to plan with no messing. I said goodbye to the lads and told them that same for the drink and when they get back. Very queer feeling when you see them going away and you know there's not much hope. It was such a difficult task, only two canoes made it to the target. A total of eight mines were planted on the ships, but the damage caused was less than they'd hoped. In truth, there wasn't a great impact. However, it made an awful lot of difference to the French and the British because it was an incredible thing to do. We can't underestimate that now, can we? No. The impact of morale, the fact that people knew they were getting behind the enemy lines and actually attempting these kind of operations. That was just it. We had done the impossible. Of the 10 men who embarked on the mission, only two made it home by escaping through Spain. Two were believed to have died in the water from hypothermia, and the other six were thought to have been executed by the Germans. I suppose I should think thankfully afterwards, but uh, I was disappointed I couldn't go. It had been stupid, wasn't I? But we were all mates together. Uh, and when you've worked with them all the time, it's, it's a, it comes hard. It does. Tomorrow sees the dedication of a memorial to the cockle shell heroes and all those French citizens who helped the survivors escape.
unbelievable bravery, knowing that there was no way out for them. Mm. And you can sense even just hearing Norman talk there, even though the it injury saved him, his life. Yeah, isn't it that he didn't take part? But yeah. you also know that they were the greatest generation. Yeah. They truly were. What extraordinary people. Yeah. Even though they were 19 years old, but their 19 was a very different than, than the 19 mm. of today. Of mm. course. Joe, yeah. an incredible story there. Mm. But wouldn't it have been easier um, for them just to bomb the harbour? Yeah, on the face of it, absolutely, when you look at everything they went through. Uh, but you've got to remember the bombing wasn't that precise. Mm. Lots of damage would have been caused. The French were our allies. We'd have undoubtedly caught, uh, killed a lot of the French people working in the docks or in the city. So it was thought it was better to go undercover to do this raid. And also, remember, we mentioned it in the film, but the morale of getting behind enemy lines, a huge yeah. boost for the British, but also showing the French they hadn't been forgotten. Yeah. So uh, Hasler and Sparks were the only ones to escape then. How, how did they get out? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, well, they were issued, I'll show you this, because this is absolutely original. This is a uh, silk uh, handkerchief sort of map that they were issued with. Um, now, that was <laughs> their only way to, to escape, really. They didn't have much information. There was no submarine picking them up again. They had to make their way through occupied France, through Vichy France, and escape that way, uh, acting on their wits, you know, trying to, to get food and, and clothing off um, of French yeah. citizens. They eventually met up with Mary Lindell, who was a British woman, who um, sort of made it her mission to help Allied service people escape. She set up an escape network through uh, the Pyrenees, through Spain, Barcelona, Madrid, and to Gibraltar. They were the first two to actually successfully go through that. And I mean, they got this map as well on the other side from the resistance, a bit mm. more detailed, but yeah. even so, it was very primitive. They were really living on their wits. Yeah. So what's planned for tomorrow then, Joe? Yeah, tomorrow, a memorial being unveiled. Uh, it's four stones. It's sort of two, you can see them there. Uh, it tells the story of the Cockershell heroes, but also commemorates um, the lives and the risk that not just the Marines went through, but also the French citizens, who some of them were even executed because of the part they played. So, very important. Uh, former Marine Lord Paddy Ashton will be there, as will 28 members of the Marines' families um, sort of paying their tributes. Lovely. No, thank you very much, Joe. Brilliant. Now, we love our wildlife on The One Show, but these next birds have a little bit of an image problem. Yeah, even so, Mike Dilger is still raving about them. <laughs> One bird on our shores has a mixed reputation.